And I would like to recognize um, Pfizer Animal Health's kind um, support of uh, this last session of today. Uh, so I am going to switch gears this year. Um, in the past at these conferences, I've tended to focus on certain viral diseases, particularly of dogs in shelters uh, that had um, uh, significant impact on their health and welfare. Uh, this year, I'm going to take a little bit of a different tack and talk about um, another emerging pathogen for dogs in shelters, and that's a bacterium this time, Streptococcus zoepidemicus. A little bit of an overview. I'm, I'm going to first describe what Streptococcus zoepidemicus is, um, um, otherwise known as Strep Zo, probably the way y'all have heard of it uh, referred to. I'm going to provide some evidence of its emergence as a, an important and fatal pathogen for dogs in shelters um, in the United States as well as around the world. Um, describe some of the clinical syndromes that infected dogs can present with in a shelter, how to diagnose this infection, uh, provide some evidence that has been accumulating now over the past um, um, two or three years that uh, this bacteria may be actually more of a secondary bacterial um, a pathogen um, following initial infection with a, a respiratory virus. And then I'm going to conclude with um, some management strategies for strep outbreaks and shelters uh, that we have been um, involved with. Strepto is a, a caucus. It's a gram-positive caucus. It belongs specifically to Lancefield Group C. Um, the strep that we are used to dealing with as a normal inhabitant as well as an opportunistic pathogen of dogs is Streptococcus canis, which also can cause um, some terrible infections in cats. But strep canis is actually a Lancefield Group G. Um, uh, Gram positive caucus, and it's strep zo that belongs in Lancefield Group C, and this is a very significant group that contains a lot of strep pathogens. Um, it is a normal member of the bacterial flora on the skin, in the upper respiratory tract, and the urogenital tract of both horses and ruminants. This is a commensal organism in that in most horses and ruminants, it does not cause disease. It's a benign colonizer. However, under certain circumstances, it can become quite virulent for horses and cows, sheep, and goats. Uh, in horses, uh, this particular streptobacterium can cause pneumonia, uh, most specifically in foals. Uh, it's been associated with uh, wound abscesses as well as uterine infections and mares that lead to reproductive failure. And in cows and other ruminants, uh, again, it has been shown to cause pneumonia, mastitis, and arthritis. So it's not only a benign, benign commensal inhabitant of the skin, the respiratory tract, and urogenital tract of um, horses and ruminants, but it also can be an opportunistic pathogen under certain circumstances. What about dogs and cats? The strep zo, um, is it a natural inhabitant of the um, skin or respiratory tract or urogenital tract in uh, healthy dogs and cats as it is in horses and ruminants? Um, so far, no. It is very, it's a very uncommon event to find this bacterium colonizing a dog or cat. There have been only a few sporadic reports of finding strep zo um, in the nose or, or a uh, pharyngeal cavity of dogs and cats that are healthy. Just recently, and this was uh, reported uh, this past June at the um, ACVIM forum in Denver, there uh, was a report about a pilot study conducted in New Zealand uh, to determine what the prevalence of strep zo inhabitation of dogs and cats is, uh, because there is very little data on uh, whether this uh, bacterium can be found in healthy uh, dogs and cats or if it truly is um, a pathogen only. 
So um, this particular group in New Zealand uh, collected pharyngeal swabs from 235 healthy dogs and cats, and they cultured uh, these swabs uh, for the presence of uh, strep cell bacteria. 135 of the animals lived in close contact with horses and rumen, the theory being that if dogs and cats had close contact with these carrier animals, of strep zo, then maybe the carrier animals would cross-contaminate or cross-colonize dogs and cats. A hundred of the animals lived in an urban environment and had no contact uh, with horses or ruminants. Out of the total 235 dogs and cats, only four dogs were found to have strep zo um, in their pharyngeal area. That's only, that's less than 2% of the uh, dogs and cats um, tested. And um, all four dogs were, were in very close contact with horses on farms. So the conclusion of these authors in New Zealand was that indeed, uh, in uh, addition to the very sporadic reports in the literature about finding strep zoe on healthy dogs and cats, this study also supported the fact that this is a very uncommon bacteria in dogs and cats. And it suggested the possibility that those that were colonized by strep zoe actually got it from close contact with horses. But other than this, there are no real um, studies to support whether strep zoe is a normal inhabitant of dogs and cats or is strictly pathogenic.